Um, I've been working closely with your faculty members on putting everything together. Of course, they are the experts on all the content, and my role is really just to be sure that we do this in a way that works well and also is safe, because um, that's always an important piece of this. So I'm going to take you through. Um, a series of slides, um, I'm happy to entertain questions, but don't want to take up too much of your time since there's also content to come. Um, how many of you have already booked your ticket? Okay. Um, if you haven't booked your ticket yet, um, you may want to look into a couple of different options. Um, STA, which is a student travel agency, they often have fairly good fares, studentuniverse.com as well. Um, and STA has a program program called ADP, which allows you to put $300 down on your ticket, and then you can pay the rest of your ticket later, which is like a week before you leave, which is a really nice thing if you're having cash flow problems at the end of the term, which often happens. Um, I do recommend that you look around a little bit for flights, um, because usually that will pay off for you in terms of getting a cheaper airfare. But I would also caution you against taking a flight that has like three different stops because every time you're switching planes there's a chance that something will go wrong and you guys have a jam-packed itinerary uh, when you get to Florence so you don't want to be struggling or arriving late etc. Um, a few things for you to keep in mind um, you will be the program starts on the 6th of September which means a September 5th departure um, typically from the East Coast, those are evening flights, um, and you're not going to get a lot of sleep that night, but you're used to that because you're architecture students, right? So, uh, <laughs> or Drexel, um, also I guess engineering students as well. Um, the end of the program is officially on the 18th, um, but I do highlight for you that the fall term at Drexel doesn't start until the 22nd. You've already paid to get over there, so you may want to consider having a couple more days at the end of the program to run around and do some things. Um, one thing that you should all be aware of is that you, of course, need to have a passport, but you also need to look at the validity dates of your passport. Most countries now are requiring you to have three months validity past your departure date. So you just want to double check your passport to be sure that you're going to be um, valid through December, I guess, of, of 2014. And if you find that that's not the case, you want to get on that now because um, if you do it now, you won't have to pay an expedited charge, but if you wait, then it'll, it'll certainly take longer. Um, in your program feed, you want to highlight what's included, your housing, local transportation, a lot of your meals, all the entry fees for required site visits and museums, but what's not included, your flight, your passport if you need it, um, the personal expenses, whatever kinds of things you want to buy while you're there, and then the meals that aren't. Um, part of their itinerary. Uh, the emergency evacuation and repatriation um, is actually an insurance policy. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, um, but that is something that we also require for our participants. So since we're talking about money, a um, few things for you to keep in mind. The euro conversion, and this is as of right now, it's $1.36 for every euro. Um, it's a little bit better than it has been, but um, it is something that you want to keep an eye on and make sure that you check a day or two before you leave so you actually know what the conversion is. Um, try to kind of give you a few things so that you're not constantly trying to do those calculations, but right now 15 euros is equal to about $20. So you just want to kind of keep that in the back of your mind as you're going out and making calculations so you know what you're actually paying for things. Um, my first trip abroad I spent a lot more money than I anticipated because I just wasn't calculating. Um, I do recommend that as you travel, you don't have to worry about getting euros before you go. It's very easy to get them once you arrive in country, um, either at an ATM or um, through an exchange at the airport. Um, so usually what I recommend students, if you don't have euros sitting around, just take US dollars with you. I would travel with at least $150 cash on you, which I know people don't normally think about doing, but that way if you get there and the ATM doesn't have any euros or you're not able to get money um, right away through an ATM, you can just take those dollars that you have and exchange them into euros um, on site at the airport. 
Obviously, doing the exchange at the airport is not the cheapest place to do it, but if you get there and you need the money, you need the money. So you'll just have to do it in that way. Um, we also recommend to students that they take a couple of different types of payment with them when they go. Um, usually most students will have a, an ATM debit card, um, and we do recommend that you have a credit card with you, um, even if it's just for emergencies. Um, because that can be very helpful if you need to um, take care of some expenses. Um, one thing that you do want to keep in mind with those kinds of things is that you will need to talk with your bank before you go. Um, think about transaction fees because typically your bank is not expecting you to be in Florence and the banks now are very quick to just shut your card down immediately. And they're like, oh, what do you know? You couldn't possibly be in Florence. You're supposed to be in Drexel. So um, just take care of that before you go. Just call them, say, yes, I'm going to be using it. It's also a great time to find out what the fees are for using your card abroad. A lot of the credit card companies now are putting on a large additional fee, which makes it less attractive to use your credit card. Um, but it's good for you to know that in advance so you don't have any surprises. And also with withdrawing money from the ATM, find out what the transaction fee is. If it's small, then sure, you can kind of do it more throughout the time, but if it's a big fee for each transaction, then you just want to take a lot of money out up front and then just be careful with it. So what to bring. Do not overpack. Do not overpack. You Really, for this amount of time, you don't even really need to check luggage, but I know a lot of you will. Um, so just be sure that you're not taking more than, than you really need. This is probably one of the things that we see most commonly with students. When you are packing, you want to think about those documents that you are taking with you and make photocopies of those documents, your passport, um, credit cards, ATM cards, all of those things. Be sure and make copies of those and put them somewhere else in your bag. Um, and also we recommend that you leave copies of those documents with someone here that's reliable that you can contact in the event of an emergency. Um, because if you need to um, cancel credit cards because things are stolen or whatever, the first thing you're going to need to know is what's the exact number and all those things. So if you have those photocopies, then you can do that very quickly. Um, we do ask in the system, in our online system, to, for you to upload a copy of your passport. So we will be able to get that. Um, the faculty members will have access to that system, so they will be able to download your passport if need be. Um, but you know, it's just a good thing for you to have um, on hand. Um, also, if you're taking any kind of medications, prescription drugs, anything like that, you want to be sure that you take that with you in your carry-on if you are going to be checking luggage. Um, and with prescription medication, you want to be sure that you have a copy of that prescription with your medication. So that if you're, if they decide to look at your bags and they open it up, they see all these pills, you actually can explain what they are because you have the prescription right there. You also want to double check on prescription medication to be sure that it is allowed in country. Um, Italy doesn't tend to have really strong restrictions about this, but if you're taking anything out of the ordinary, you certainly want to um, double check with that. And you know, I'm also happy if, if you have some concerns about prescription medication or whatever, please reach out to me. I'm happy to um, contact um, on call with our emergency provider to see if there's a way that you know if we needed to get it for you, it would be easy for us to get it for you abroad. Um, also, take emergency contact information. I know you guys don't have a lot of paperwork and that kind of thing, but don't put that in your checked luggage, or it might not be so helpful for you when when you arrive. Um, I did forget to bring, we have emergency cards for them, so I'll give those to you and you can give that to them at the next meeting. It's just a little wallet sized card that you can just throw in your wallet um, and it has emergency numbers on there, so if you need to contact someone, you will know how to do it. Um, I also recommend that you take comfortable clothes and shoes. I know Italians are known for their style and of course you also want to be the stylish students while you're there, um, but think carefully about the itinerary that you have and how much time you're going to be spending walking around and doing sketches and things like that. Wear things that you can comfortably sketch in and walk in. Particularly um, if you are a fan of high heels, I'm not sure I would wear
wear those on this trip. I think I would go for the flats. Um, so, and the other thing, as I did also mention that you shouldn't overpack, I would suggest that you take darker colors because when those get dirty, you don't see that as much. So, um, you know, if you have lots of white t-shirts, you're not going to be able to get a lot of use out of those. So, um, also recommend to you that you don't take any valuables, keepsakes, anything that is super precious that you would be upset about if you lost your grandfather's watch. Um, you know, your great-grandmother's ring or anything like that, just leave those things here um, because those are the kinds of things that can just kind of ruin your trip if, if those things get lost. So really just don't take them with you. Um, are they, are they going to need laptops while they're there? I don't think so. Okay. I think we're going to try to do as much as we can using our phones. Okay. Uh, there is Wi-Fi at the place, so I'll probably bring my uh, iPad. Right. But I'm not going to walk around with it. Really. Yeah. So. Um, I think, you know, if, if you can get away with it, it might be, you know, you want to think carefully about those items that are easy to just pick up and take. And you know this because you go to school in Philadelphia, so you already know how to be smart and not leave your stuff hanging out of your bag or whatever. Um, but if you don't feel like it's absolutely essential for you to have it, then I would leave it. If you have an iPad or if you're or your friend or someone has an iPad, well, maybe not a friend. Parents will forgive you, friends might not. And, so, um, and I'm not trying to scare you. It's not like people get stuff stolen all the time while they're abroad. But one of the things that you want to do as you're preparing for this is just kind of like minimize the, the amount of things that could go wrong. So um, if you could get away without having your laptop, it might be a, a smart thing to do. Um, if you do decide to check your luggage, please, please, please put a change of clothes in your carry-on. That's one of the things that often is very difficult for students when they get somewhere and the program is starting right away and they have been wearing these clothes overnight and they just feel uncomfortable and they don't feel feel good. So um, just throw something in, remember the darker colors and, and you'll be good. Um, and of course, I think that there's a lot of um, things that are going to happen as you're getting ready to go. This could be very stressful. I know that a lot of you are going to be working or taking classes and trying to cram everything in, and you're really going to be probably exhausted when you get on that plane, but use that plane ride to kind of be like, okay, this is it. I'm ready to go. This is going to be an amazing experience. Um, and just kind of be prepared for things to be very different. Um, that's one of the things that we remind our students always, that part of the experience abroad is about being flexible, about seeing a different way of doing things. Um, and so you just kind of want to come into this with a good attitude, a sense of adventure. You should almost expect for something to go wrong because often that happens and then you're better prepared for it um, when it happens. And you know, if you can just kind of keep a light attitude about it, that usually makes it much easier for everyone. So while you're abroad, of course, follow the guidelines of your trip leaders. Stay with other travelers. When you have free evenings, if you're going out, please, um, as much as I don't want you going out as a loud group of Americans, because that doesn't always reflect so well um, on our country. Also, you know, try to stick together. Um, don't leave each other singles in bars and things like that if you're going out at night. Um, that's where things can sometimes go wrong. Um, remember that also that you're a representative of Drexel, of I think most are all of you U.S. citizens? You're also representatives of the United States, um, and it's one of the reasons actually why I like sending students abroad, because I think that the students that we normally send are very good representatives of our country. Um, so please keep up that belief for me that you guys are going as good representatives. Um, We've had some really, really positive feedback from other groups that have gone, just like people were so impressed with our students, and, and we like that. And that's what really allows us to continue to do these things. Um, I did also want to stress to you that this is an academic program. It's not a holiday. So um, of course, we certainly hope that it's going to be a really enjoyable experience and that you're going to do a lot of things on this experience that you might do if you were on a holiday. But things like shopping and you know, spending all afternoon in a restaurant or something, those are not priorities on this trip. 
I, I'm sure that there are ways that you can kind of work these things in when you have some free time. Um, but just mentally prepare yourself, like I'm going to work, this is going to be work, it's going to be great, but um, I know I'm going to get a lot out of this academically and that's really what we want. Um, probably the, the biggest area that students are concerned about is the communication piece of what do I do with my cell phone. Um, I do recommend that you look into what the international plan is for your phone. Um, to see if that's a viable option or not. Um, it can be extremely expensive, and if you have a smartphone that's constantly roaming and doing all kinds of things, that will add up very, very quickly, unless you have some kind of specialized plan. Um, some students, what they will do is if they have an old phone, they'll unlock that phone, and then they'll get a SIM card when they arrive, and then you can just buy like a 20 euro card that you can just use while you're there. That's a good way to control it so that way you still have access to a cell phone while you're there um, without it getting really expensive. Um, the other thing, obviously, you can make use of Wi-Fi and doing um, calls over Wi-Fi and that type of thing, which, which helps a lot. But just be very cognizant of that. Don't just take your, I mean, unless you have all the money in the world, don't just take your phone over there and turn it on and act like you're here because it, it will be very expensive. My husband did that once and in like three days it was like $350 and so I was very mad. So <laughs> that was a, a, an amazing dinner that we could have had. Like, um, you should also be familiar with the local dialing rules um, in case there is some kind of an emergency. You want to know the local emergency number. Um, if you go on to the State Department website and look up Italy, they'll have a whole listing there for you of how to call internationally and also what the local emergency number is. I will tell you, I should have looked before this presentation, but um, I did not, um, and I don't know all of them off the top of my head. I will tell you it's not 911, but you do want to know, it might be 191, but I, I'm not certain about that. So. Um, the other thing I would stress to you is to prepare your friends and family to not have a lot of communication from you while you're doing this. Be there, be in the moment. You know, I think that we are so obsessed with always checking our email and always replying and putting stuff up on Facebook or whatever, which is great, but you don't want to spend all of your time doing those kinds of things, and you also don't want to worry people here. Sometimes we'll have parents that will call us and say, but I, you know, I talk with my kid every day, and I haven't talked to them, and we're like, they're in Rome, like, you know, I'm pretty sure they're fine. So just kind of prepare the people that you regularly communicate um, with to not expect a lot of communication with you, or, you know, set something up where you say, okay, I'm gonna post on Facebook every three days. I mean, maybe you will post every day, maybe it'll be easy, but it's just easier if you kind of tell them up front, and then they're pleasantly surprised if they hear from you sooner. Uh, in terms of health and safety, um, I did want to mention um, or highlight for you the difference between health insurance and um, emergency evacuation insurance. So as Drexel students, you're all required to have health insurance, and that's what basically you know allows you to see a doctor or whatever. Um, a lot of health insurance will also be valid while you are abroad, but the way it works is that you have to pay up front for things and then you file a claim with your health insurance company here. So you do want to take a look at that. Emergency evacuation insurance is what we would use to get you out of there if we needed to get you out of there in a hurry for whatever reason. That could be political, that could be medical, that could be natural disaster. Um, and we require this for all of our students. Um, we have had to use this for students to get them out of certain situations. We've had students that have been very sick that have had to be medevaced out, and the cost of med evacuation um, from places is ridiculous. Um, the emergency evacuation insurance will cost you $36. It's through um, Aetna, and you go online to buy it. You can't buy it yet because the fall 2014 coverage isn't available. Um, when it becomes available, we will email you and say, okay guys, go in and buy it. Um, 
but it'll really help you. I mean, beyond the evacuation piece, they also do doctor referrals. They'll do a translator if one of you ends up in the hospital and your parents want to come over. It includes coverage for that. So um, it's really a good coverage to have. And regardless of whether it's good or not, we're going to require you to have it. So just take care of it. So um, I think the other thing about um, this is that it is something good for you to know about really for the rest of your life. Um, if you are an adventurous soul and you're going to be doing traveling around the world, you want to have evacuation insurance in case something happens to you. Um, it also it covers repatriation of remains, so if you were to die abroad, it would allow you to get your body back to, or your family to get your body back to the United States. There's coverage for that as well. So it's just kind of a good thing to know about, and I think a lot of people don't travel with this kind of insurance, um, which is very dangerous. Um, immunizations, there isn't anything in particular that you need to have for Italy. Um, medications, we already talked about a little bit. Um, we also, through the emergency evacuation coverage, we can provide you with a reference for a local doctor. Also on the State Department website, there are a lot of recommendations. Um, because Italy is such a tourist haven, they do have a lot of American trained doctors that are there, and so um, you're not going to have an issue of not having a doctor that doesn't speak English, particularly in the Florence area. Um, but obviously, that would be helpful. How many of you speak Italian? Okay, so um, the, so you would definitely need to have Rachel with you in that case, but it probably won't won't be necessary. And we really hope none of you need to see a doctor while you're abroad. Safe sex goes without saying, be smart, be prepared. You guys are gonna be super busy, so I don't even know how much this will be an issue, but um, I would say to be prepared. That is probably vocabulary that you don't know in Italian. Um, no drugs and, and serious consequences. Um, I do just mention this um, because oftentimes when our students get themselves into trouble, it's because alcohol um, or drugs have been involved. Um, so, of course, this is something that is part of Italian culture, is having wine and things like that. But to be very careful, know your limits. Also know that you're going to have to be getting up very early the next morning. So you need to be um, taking care of those things under control. Uh, it also seems to happen more often than not that um, if there's some kind of occurrence with a student, um, losing a wallet or anything like that, it's sometimes related to alcohol consumption. So please be smart, again, be good representatives of this country, um, and just kind of keep yourself um, under control. I would also say that you should be very, very careful about the consequences that might be related to um, excessive alcohol consumption or drugs, um, because there is no, oh, they're just college kids having fun in Italy. Um, they, they will take this quite seriously, and you will be subjected to their laws, not American laws. Um, so, of course, we will not leave you there to wither away in jail, but we also have to respect you know, the laws of that country. So, um, just be smart. If you see people not being smart, remind them to be smart. Um, kind of take care of one another. We have. We have had a few incidences of this, but not any recently, and I would like to be able to say that next year when I'm doing this, so please keep that, keep that going. Um, we also do have two emergency numbers. Um, I will get those cards for you so that you have them. Um, but we have a, a dean on duty system, so if you have any kind of emergency, you can just call the directional emergency number. Um, and identify yourself as a study abroad student. They will immediately call the director of our office, um, Donnie Ascarelli, who will then kind of put things into place. Um, this is a relatively new system using the Dean on Duty, so we are also giving you um, Donnie's cell phone. Um, obviously, you're only calling her in emergency, um, but we have had to deal with things in the middle of the night many, many times, um, so don't hesitate to call. We want you to call us if there's some kind of issue abroad. Um, obviously, you will have faculty members there too, um, but if they're not available, um, then please reach out to us. 
Um, a few things just to highlight for you in terms of your general safety abroad. Um, probably one of the best ways that you can protect yourself is really not to draw a lot of attention to yourself. Um, so to kind of try and blend as much as you can with the local culture. Um, obviously you're not going to be able to run around speaking Italian and really blending in that way. But um, you know, you will see very quickly, like Americans tend to stand out abroad and it's not just because oftentimes we're loud, but it's also the way we walk and the way we um, look people in the eye and things like that. Um, especially ladies, you should be careful. If you look an Italian guy in the eye and you smile, he thinks you're interested. Um, so just be very careful about the kinds of signals. I guess guys too, this goes the same way. Um, <laughs> just be careful about the kinds of signals that you're sending and, and really try to do as much as you can to blend. Um, we do also recommend to all of our students that you register in the um, State Department. It's the Smart Traveler Enrollment Program. It's called STEP. Um, from the online application, there's actually a link to it, so you don't have to worry about writing that down. Um, but basically what that does is it gives you up-to-date information. If anything is going on in Italy, um, they will send out you know, some kind of warning. So you know, like right now, I'm sure that there's probably notices going on about World Cup. And you know when there's games, when the Italian team is playing, you know there might be some areas where you want to avoid because there's a lot of stuff going on related to World Cup. So they send out all kinds of things. Um, hopefully there won't be any messages while you're there. We also receive those messages and monitor them. And if there were to be any kind of critical incident, I would certainly be sharing that with the faculty members so that they could let you know. But it's actually very helpful if you already have that information. Um, in other, other ways that you can prepare yourself, we do have um, some resources on our website. You are there for a short period of time, so um, it may be a good idea for you just to kind of look at those things and see what precautions you can take before you go so it doesn't end up being an issue while you're there. Cultural shock and preparing for the local culture. Um, <clears throat> because of the length of, of your trip, you're probably not going to have the huge culture shock um, that some of our students have who are abroad for a longer period of time. But I do hope that you get to know the Italian culture enough to feel some differences. Uh, it'll be really, uh, it's always unfortunate when people come back, they're like, oh, it's fine, it's exactly the same as here. It's like, no, how could you possibly say that? It's, it's not at all the same. Like, they're coffees, they're little, um, <laughs> you know, little, you know, there's all kinds of, of differences. So I hope that you do have a little bit of culture shock. Um, just because it shows that you're actually paying attention and you're engaging a little bit with the local culture. I think that's part of understanding a lot of the things that you're looking at is trying to look at how the Italians approach things in a very different way. So um, just be prepared for that. Um, hopefully it won't have any kind of negative impact on your experience, just kind of an awareness of, of other things. Um, I would recommend to you to kind of learn a little bit of Italian before you go. Um, at the very least, you should be able to say please and thank you and maybe excuse me or something so that you can show some general politeness. Um, I think it always makes a good impression on the locals if you've made an effort to say um, some very small things. So, um, yeah, it's also kind of fun to read about Italian culture and the differences that they have. Huge emphasis on food. You can spend days reading all about the importance of food and family in Italian culture, which is kind of a nice thing. So um, learn a little bit more about that. Um, you know, the State Department they do guides on every country, so you can go through and, and read their guide. It doesn't have as much, I would say, cultural information as kind of factual information and background of the government and those types of things. Um, but very helpful. And I think also it's a good chance for you to look at your own culture and what does it mean to be an American? What are the things that we really value that might be different from what Italians value and how does that affect um, the way things, things run in that country? I think it's always um, interesting for our students to kind of grapple a little bit with Italian bureaucracy. You don't have to get a visa to go on this trip because it's so short, but for those students who have to go through that process, they learn a lot about, you know, kind of the Italian system and, and that, you know, also tells you some things about your own system that you like. 
Um, just a little plug again to be a good ambassador while you're there. Um, to be sensitive, open, willing to look at things from a different direction. Um, you know, not just to say, oh, this is really wrong the way the Italians do things. You know, to be more open and say, oh, that's a very interesting approach. I wonder why they do it that way. Um, so, items for our office. For almost all of you, you have passed through the first phase. I'm going to out a few of you because uh, Parker Els, Christopher Hone, and Colin Levinsky uh, still need to complete a few documents to move into the next phase. I've emailed you. Get on it, please, uh, because everybody else is ahead of you. Um, so there are questionnaires that you need to complete. Um, and then also some materials. Um, a lot of you have been really great about taking care of the program fee. Thank you very much. That makes it much easier for us um, to get things done. Uh, but these are the basic items that, that we do ask of all of our participants. Uh, we do ask for your flight itinerary so that we can collect all that information, share it with the faculty members. And if for some reason you don't show up, that's a way that we can kind of try to figure out, okay, so what happened there? Um, medical history we also ask for. It's really important for us to know if there's allergies or, or some, something that you might need to have support with um, while you're abroad. So we can talk about that now and make sure that we have that stuff for you. Uh, passport information we already talked about. Um, student conduct, they just require us to do this as part of the Clery Reporting Act. We also have to have this kind of information. Um, refund policy, most of you have already done that. On call, we talked about. Um, we do also ask for you to say yes or no that, that you authorize Drexel to seek medical assistance on your behalf um, while you're abroad. Obviously, we're only going to do that in the event of an emergency, but we have to have your permission in order to do that. So um, you can say yes or no, um, but please think carefully about that. Um, there's also a student declaration and a standard waiver and release. I have a question on the medical thing. Um, online it says that they will make every effort to contact your emergency contact before they make mm -hmm. a call. Is, am I understanding that correctly or is that? That, that is correct, okay. but in a life and death situation, if you're well, like, you either take you to the hospital or you stay where you are kind of thing, right. like, you'll take us to the hospital. Right, right, exactly. I mean, I think, you know, we do use, in those kinds of situations, we use our emergency evacuation. Um, coverage and so you know we would have licensed professionals that are basically saying like yeah it's fine we can contact the parents first or or whoever the emergency contact is or no we're really getting her yeah, you know, yeah. Some care now. Okay. so um, you know again we really hope that we don't have to have that or have to need that information but sometimes we do um, so just some things to think about double check that passport take care of those Drexel items online um, another thing to be sure that you're preparing all your course materials in advance, you'll have assignments, you'll have readings, things like that. Don't save all those things for the flight. Um, one of the things I think often happens for people when they're in Italy is that there's so much going on around them and I know that your faculty members are going to prepare you really well for that. So you'll really be able to make the most of the experience if you have done all the readings in advance and that type of thing. Um, so please, um, you know, take that seriously so that your time in Italy is really spent living